In today's video, we're going to talk about how to build a container image using Kaneko. Up until this point, you may have been using Docker inside of your Kubernetes cluster to build your container images. Last week, you found out from your Kubernetes administrator that they are going to be switching away from Docker as the runtime to container D. What this means to you is that you no longer have access to Docker to build your container images. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to use Kaneko to build your container images and then push them to Docker Hub. Here's what we're starting today. We have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.289.2. .2. Right now, that controller is running on a VM and not inside of a Kubernetes cluster. Unlike other videos, we do not have a static agent connected to this controller. So what that means is we have a Kubernetes cluster where we're going to be running our agent workloads. The Kubernetes cluster that I'm using today is based on Kind. If you've not worked with Kind before, check out the video that's up in the upper right-hand corner about how to set up Kind to work with Jenkins. In the description below this video is a link to a gist that will have all of the commands that we're going to be running today. To get started today, the first thing that we need to do is set up an access token inside of Docker Hub. So right now we're logged into Docker Hub in my account. I'm going to go up to my name, go to account settings, and then click on security. If we scroll down a little bit, we'll see new access token. So let's go ahead and create a new access token. I'm going to give it the name of Jenkins and the access permissions will leave just as they are and click on generate. So now I have a token that I can use because what's going to be happening is Kaneko needs credentials in order to access Docker Hub so we can push the image. So I have copied my token. I'm going to save that over here to the side. Okay, got that. And now I'm going to close. All right, so now we have this token set up. We're ready to go with this. Now next, what we need to do is we need to create a secret inside of Kubernetes, not inside of Jenkins, but inside of Kubernetes, so that Kaneko can use this credential to be able to push the image to Docker Hub. So how do we do that? Well, it's actually fairly simple. We're going to go over here to our shell. I already have a active context within Kubernetes. And let's look and see what we have here. I have a kubectl create secret, Docker registry. You'll see what that is in a moment, and Docker credentials. We'll review that in the pipeline. The Docker username is Darren Pope. That's my username within Docker Hub. The Docker password is the access code that I just created, or the access token. The Docker email is my personal email address. And then finally, namespace, because we have a namespace inside of our Kubernetes cluster named Jenkins, which is where we have Kubernetes set up and pointing. Again, if you've watched the previous video about how to set up Jenkins and Kubernetes, that's covered there. So let's go ahead and press Enter. And we can see here that we've created our Docker credentials under the secret. Now let's go over to our controller and create a test job. And this test job will also be over in the gist. So we'll say new item. I'm going to call this test job. Click on pipeline, click on OK. And let me grab an example pipeline. Do that over here on my side, and then we'll look and see what we have to do here. OK, so inside of the pipeline script, what we have is our pipeline. Now again, watching the previous video about how to do pipelines within Jenkins when using Kubernetes for your agents, it's very similar. The big difference this time is we're going to be using Kaneko to actually build an image and push it to Docker Hub. So what we have here is the standard pipeline anytime that we're using Kubernetes as an agent. So what we have here is our container name is going to be Kaneko. The image is going to be from gcr.io, Kaneko project, and then executor and debug. There will also be a link in the gist to the documentation for Kaneko so you can understand why debug is being used. We're always going to pull the image. I'll leave that up to you if you want to do that or not. We have a sleep command, how long it's going to sleep, basically near infinity. Now here's where things get very different than what you may have seen before. We have a volume mount into the Kaneko container. The name is Jenkins Docker Config, and the mount path is Kaneko.docker. Well, let's look at this volume. The name of the volume is right here, Jenkins Docker Config, and it's projected through a secret named Docker Credentials. Now, if you think about it, 
That is the credential that we just created over here inside of our Jenkins namespace. So we're using that name from the secret. And then because of how things are named and how things are extracted, the dot docker config JSON is the name of the file within the secret that then gets mapped into the config.json that goes into the mount path. So if that seems a little weird, go back and listen to that again, or take a look at the documentation that will explain how this Docker credential gets mapped into the volume mount. Now let's take a look at what we're actually doing in the job. We're doing a very simple build with Canico. We're saying container name Canico, that's pretty normal, but then we have this shell. And the type of shell within the Canico image is based on BusyBox. So we have to explicitly set the shell to slash BusyBox slash SH. If you forget to add this, then it will not work. So give it a name, give it a shell. Also, one more thing with BusyBox is we also have to specify in the script that we're running, because this is a script, we also have to specify the shell for BusyBox at the top. Now, we don't have a real repository that we're pulling things from. All we're doing is we're saying echo from Jenkins inbound agent latest into a Docker file. So Canico is expecting by default a Docker file to be in its location. So by taking that Docker file, we're just creating one on the fly. Then what we're doing is we're saying, okay, Canico executor context, right where I'm at, PWD, and the destination is going to be Darren Pope. This is going to be for Docker Hub because we didn't specify a registry. So it's going to go to Docker Hub by default. It's going to go to the Darren Pope account. We've already set up the credential for that. And we're putting it into hello-canico and we're tagging it as latest. So what Canico Executor does, if you think about it from a Docker build perspective, is this one line is doing a Docker build, a Docker tag, and then a Docker push all in this one line. Now there are other parameters you can pass in to Canico Executor. We're not gonna be looking at those today. You can take a look at those in the documentation link. So let's go ahead and click on save and let's see what happens here. We click save, we click on build now. Then as this starts up, let's take a look at the job. So it's creating a pod, it's pulling the image. We'll give that just a couple of seconds. We're now getting our inbound agent set up. Again, give that a couple of seconds. Marked as offline. It should be spinning up here momentarily. Now we have our JNLP container starting and we're almost to the point of the job running. Well, the job's actually running. We're waiting for the containers to spin up in the pod. We're waiting to get into the material part of our job. Okay, so now we are into where Canico Executor is running. We can see that we've done our build. We've pushed the image to Darren Pope Hello Canico, and it's complete. So, recap that again. We retrieved an image from Jenkins Inbound Agent Latest. Remember, that's how we created our Docker file. We just sent that text into the Docker file, retrieved it. I did the builds, I skipped unpacking because nothing needed it. We push the image until it's complete. So let's go over to Docker Hub and see what we have here. So within Docker Hub, I'm gonna go back up to Docker Hub. I'm gonna refresh this page. And what we're gonna see here is we now have a Hello Canico public project. And you can see that it was pushed about a minute ago with the latest tag. Here are two reasons why you want to use Canico as your container image build tool. First off, Canico does not require any special permissions or privileges, so that means you can run Canico in any standard Kubernetes cluster. And secondly, Kubernetes deprecated Docker as a container runtime in 1.20, and Docker is currently planned to be removed completely as a container runtime in Kubernetes 1.22. So at that point, Docker would no longer be a valid build tool for you once you hit a Kubernetes standard cluster that's running version 122, at least at the time of recording, or higher. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, 
give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to Clobby's TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on Cloudbees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.